What is going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a great Wednesday. Bobby Fathom man, Eric Sheets Haver. Want to do a quick shout out real quick to, to Rody for, for coming second last night in the 111 with just three entries. I uh, just want to remind everybody, check us out. Uh, please, I think it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, at least join our Discord right now while it's still free, which won't be much longer because the NFL season's coming up. And uh, yeah, shout out to Rody for, for taking it down with just three entries. Sheets won the big one uh, 10 days ago with one entry and Look, we're we're not we're not max entering like some guys on other sites. We're we're trying we're trying to show how to win, how you can win as a uh, with with limited entries, with limited funds, and uh, it is still very doable. The game is speedable to a certain extent, and uh, especially if you're using Sheets as projections. So, just wanted to plug that stuff before we go. Sheets, we've got you know we're, we've got golf coming up. We we're, we just talked about the day slate. What, what are your thoughts on any sort of overall thoughts on the evening slate or you want to just jump right into it game by game? No, I want to talk for a couple of minutes more about what you just said. Um, Cause I wasn't planning on it, but you know, we, 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 listen, we got into this because, you know, we just, I just really like doing it. Right. And if we make money doing it, that's great, you know, whatever, but I really just enjoy this. And when we ever start talking like the business side, side of this, and we always think about like, like what's, you know, what's the value proposition? That's like kind of like, you know, business speak for, you know, what what makes yourself different than everybody else if you want to market yourself. And we always kind of have a tr have a little bit of trouble with it, you know, because we talk about transparency, meaning that we, you know, we basically tell people what we're playing, which is very unique or whatever it is. But I think in the past couple of months, you, you mentioned what you just mentioned a couple of times that I think that really resonates. I and mean, we think about what types of players appreciate what we do and, and that, I think you hit it right on the head, you know, like we're, we, it's, it's not beginners, right. That, that, that appreciate what we do, but it's not the people that are going to put in like 300 lineups a day, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, but you know, we, we'd like to show that, that you can get, you can get, take down those things without having to put in 150 entries and without putting $10,000 worth of buy-ins in these tournaments every day. I didn't even realize that that one eleven that Rody was in, it was like you could have put 130 entries in that. And mm -hmm. listen, I'm not listen. Everybody can do what they want for a living, and that's pretty cool. You know, if you're you're that type that can really grind and put in 10,000 a day of entries and play 150 lineups in every in every tournament, whatever, that's fine. But you, I don't think you have it both ways. I don't think you could just keep screenshotting that. You know, oh look, uh, so one of our one of our 20 guys that we track won tonight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, because yeah, I mean, you're going to put like zillions of lineups in. I mean, invariably there's going to be somebody that, that, that puts something up, but mm -hmm. I think that, the, I think that you're hitting it right on the head that I think if you follow like our approach, um, I think it is conducive to being able to at least be in contention to take down one of these things that usually requires, you know, 150 lineups to, to get in. Listen, I know how it feels, man. Like when I, when I take, when I've taken one of these things down, and I feel surrounded by these, by when you see like a XYZ7, XYZ9, XYZ32, XYZ47, like the same guy as like all these guys surrounding and you can hold all those guys off, you know, it's tough, you know, but, but I think that we've uh, got a couple of guys that are able to do it sometimes. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way, uh, the mm -hmm. way things are going for the site. Yeah. Same here. And um, obviously always welcome open to feedback and all that stuff. And uh yeah, but uh, with that said, Sheets, are you ready to 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 jump on into it and let's get your yeah. With that said, I hate this freaking slate. You you don't <laughs> like it, huh? Well, you know what? Because there's a, there's a freaking enormous standout standout stack, and there's an enormous standout pitcher. You know, so 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 what are you gonna do? You know, well, I mean, we'll figure it out <laughs> like anything else. I always find these stacks a little tough to figure out, so I'm I'm kind of interested to see where you're at, and we'll kind of try to go through this. Yeah. And uh, and we also do have like you know a little bit of uh, weather concerns in in one game. So actually, it's the first game we're probably going to talk about. I think, yeah. The yeah. I'm not just going to take a quick look and just see where the weather is at while we uh, while we get your screen pulled up. Oh right. Uh, let's see. No, no, no worries. Um, yeah, it's it's it, you know it's it's a little it's a little iffy uh, to be honest. But uh, it, you know, let's just say that this game plays. This is to me a very obvious pivot spot from the chalk and i think that you will have some ownership but probably after the top three hitters i don't think it's going to be anything out of control and uh i am going to be high on toronto tonight if there is in fact if the game does look like it's a go um even if it's questionable i might and again it's it's you know baltimore you know has i i think their bullpen is very you know is, is much worse than it seems and Kramer has been better than you would think. But then when you look at the starts where he's actually been good, 
Pittsburgh, the Angels did have a good one against Seattle, the White Sox, who are terrible against right handers, uh, Tampa Bay, who occasionally puts out a minor league lineup just to mix things up. I don't know how they still win, but they do. Anyway, I, I'm I'm high on the Angel, on the Blue Jays today. Uh, they are one of my stacks, and uh, that's pretty much uh, what I like in this game. I think Barrios at this price is going to be hard to ignore if the weather is okay. Um, and I'm looking at it. Is this can this be right that no one's going to? No, that can't be right. Um, Barrios, well, he's gonna. I mean, he's not showing up to get much ownership. So I I will take Barrios with a, with Toronto as a one of my one of my spots today. How about you? Yeah. So I have to remember to post in my Facebook group for my uh my law school uh my my law school uh Facebook group where I went to law school at Tulane because every time this guy pitches I have to post because uh uh we had a Dean Kramer. He was the dean of our law school. So. Oh really? <laughs> so Dean Kramer, uh, I always have to remind everybody but Dean Kramer is, is pitching tonight, even though he's 80 at this point. <laughs> um so uh yeah, Toronto seems to me, if the weather holds, to be a very natural pivot, as they always seem to be, right? Yep. Um, and uh, I'm not getting to – I'm really not getting to either pitcher, but I, I will say that there's just nothing for me to play pitching-wise except for Verlander. So so any 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 any, any suggestions is, are, are going to be uh, – Going to be well, uh, well, well appreciated. And I guess of the of the list, I guess Barrios. I have, I mean, he's one of them. I mean, I have Barrios as, as one of the one of the pitchers. So if this game goes, like you said, it's going to be tough to ignore because you have to play two. Um, and I only have him, like you said, I don't have him that highly owned either. But I don't know where the ownership is going to come from from the SP two. Uh, we have to we'll have yeah. to talk about that. And for what it's worth, Toronto. I mean, Baltimore has been much much better this year than they were given credit for. Um, right. And and well, Baltimore is good this year. I mean, they're like they're like what are they five hundred? I mean, like no, absolutely. I mean, and 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 a lot of it's due to the. I mean, obviously, it's not it's not their great pitching staff. It's the, no. the, these guys have they're 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 pesky. They've got a lot of hitters. But I do I do think it's really strange that we have a slate and a guy changes uniforms and all of a sudden, you know, Syndergaard is going to be higher owned than Barrios, and that hasn't happened all season long. <laughs> um, so it's just a little bit funny. And this is that's the next game. And and again, we do have some weather concerns in this game. Uh, yeah. I think the best pitcher on the slate, and I think that this is a joke of a projection of the five and a half K prop for Alcantara. Um, Alcantara is, I mean, in terms of fantasy, a much better pitcher than, than Verlander has been all season long by quite a bit. Uh, he's been absolutely awesome. And it's a tough, Philly is a, a very sneaky, tough matchup. They take pitches, all that stuff. I think Alcantara will be one of the, if not the top guy on the slate. And uh, everybody always, I feel like we always sort of like breeze past him and stuff like that. But he is, I mean, he's just lights out. Like he is, he is incredibly good. I don't know how he threw nine innings against Cincinnati and only had three strikeouts. That's really, really odd for him. But the strikeouts are there for him. The innings pitch, the the leash, just a real life, awesome, awesome pitcher that needs to get out of Miami at some point. And uh, I have no interest in anything else from this game at all. I think Syndergaard is completely fine, but I would rather play Barrios personally. I think you. I think you're going to get called Kantara at very reasonable ownership if you want to play him. Um, I'm just going to say. Um, you really think so? I don't think so. I do. I, th- I think Verlander against Texas is going to be 65 percent on. I do. Um, I, I that, think that. Yeah, maybe. Um, the only thing I would say is that I think the part. Well, I don't know. I guess it depends on the weather too. I mean, this game. This game is probably the scariest weather game out on the slate. Well, that's the problem. Uh, yeah, but and then that'll that'll put Verlander at 75 percent. I mean, literally. Uh, that's that's my opinion. At least. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Um, uh Syndergaard's gonna be popular too, by the way. So he yeah, so now let's get to that. So so I think that Syndergaard is gonna be I have him as I, I this is like kind of gross. We'll get to the other guys later, but I have him, yeah. He's def I think that between him and if the Barrio, let's see, if the Barrios game plays and the see Syndergaard, you know, he was really, really sketchy in his last game. Like he got he got the win. This was this game was um was 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 called after five and a half. Um, this was the got, one where the I had win. all these all these Reds and they had all, all these Phillies had all these home runs and then it got called after five and a half innings. Um, and they were making a big joke. They were they were like, oh, this is Syndergaard. We got we got to call it now to make sure he gets the win, whatever it is. So he got the win, but he was very sketchy in this game. He got the um, win to get to which got for four points, which brought him up to a total of four point six five. Yeah, yeah, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, 
So he's sketchy, and if he's um, uh, I'm not gonna have to play Miami. I, don't, I, don't I absolutely think that that's extremely viable today. I really yeah, do. I think I, that I, at I, least at least getting a mini stack. One thing about Syndergaard is he, in general, like he's not gonna. He first of all, you can run all over the place on him. He's gonna give up a ton of stolen bases in general. Um, he just he's he's the easiest guy to steal on in all of baseball. He pitches to contact and doesn't strike out a ton of people. I, I mean, look, it's it's an awesome, awesome way to get different. You don't necessarily need to go, even go full stack, but if you get a nice little three-man from Miami um, with the speed power upside, you know, against Syndergaard, I think that's really reasonable. I mean, he gave up 11 hits in five innings in his last start. He's going to pitch to contact. So Garrett Cooper for power upside at 2.3K. Uh, maybe Luen Diaz, Joey Wendell can always steal a base. So Billy Hamilton is 2K. Billy Hamilton is in the major leagues. He's in the major leagues and projected to start for Miami. I have him not starting, but that's interesting. Yeah. I, I actually forgot that he was even in the league. Um, yeah. Billy Hamilton, th- th- there's an automatic still. If he gets on base, that's an automatic steal. You can just give it to him right, right now. <laughs> they just may as well give him second base. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's jump over to, to Boston and Atlanta. And I think this is one of the more interesting games on the slate because you have two guys who can be good the thing about pavetta though he's just all over the map and he's definitely regressed big time i mean he he was on fire for a while this season and he has been getting knocked around another guy who's going to pitch to a lot of contact um he is not going to he he, he his his walks his i mean he his walks are way up um his hard contact is way up you can hit home runs off of him it's the braves it's in it it's in boston Lot to like about the Braves here for me, um, as another as another pivot stack, but they also have some strikeouts, and I think that it may be a long shot, you know, Pavetta versus a long shot Syndergaard, uh, uh, unowned Pavetta versus a, a, a high owned Syndergaard. I, I think that's reasonable uh, as a pivot, but I'm more interested in the Atlanta side of this offensively. I don't think I'm going to get to Boston. That's where yeah, I'm. I have Atlanta as alongside of Toronto as the sec as the second nat- more, you know natural pivot off of uh, off of St. Louis. Um, so, so I like that. And I, well, well, I will say this, I mean, Pavetta as opposed to Syndergaard, at least, at least Pavetta, if he's, if he's pitching well, is going to strike people out, you know, right. Um, right. Syndergaard didn't strike anybody out. So um, this is a, uh, I, I, I think I agree with you. What's Pavetta's price? 83. I, I kind of would rather play him than somebody like Syndergaard. At least if, like I said, you know, if, at least if he's pitching well, he, there are strikeouts, as you mentioned, in the Atlanta lineup. So if he does pitch well, it's going to translate to a good game um, where Syndergaard could pitch well and still get 14 fantasy points. <laughs> That's right. Like, right. Um, so, yeah, I think this is actually pretty interesting. I didn't think about this. So so Atlanta uh, certainly is in play. But then again, if Atlanta is also becoming become that natural set, natural pivot, maybe get a little bit of, of kind of like weird sneaky ownership. Ah, maybe maybe this Pavetta thing is uh, is pretty reasonable. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's I think it's definitely viable as a as a weird SP2 option. And but at the same time, it's interesting because no one I'm I'm showing very little ownership on Atlanta at all today, too. And, and really? I think that's really uh I mean Acuna at 40. Like, I understand and people are gonna be like, oh Acuna sucks. He has had a this kind of a season or whatever. I, I just don't care. Um <laughs> I don't bet on long-term long-term talent and Acuna is, you know, is too good to be 4,900 ever, even with the off season, even if with the season he's had, which has been a struggle. I mean, he was, what did he, he had three hits yesterday um, and a stolen base. He he has multiple routes to get you there. Austin Riley has just been crushing the ball. It would be nice if there was more lefties to try and pick on Pavetta with, but uh, Matt Olson, obviously being one of the guys you, you would want to use there. And then you can always use the, uh, the, the never owned Michael Harris, who just is awesome. And, uh, it's putting up like ridiculous numbers and out of the bottom of the order. So I, I like this. I like this Atlanta stack quite a bit, actually, if I'm not playing where I'm not going to play Pavetta, but I think both, both sides make some sense. All right. Uh, all right. Now we've got Savale at 6,500 against Detroit. It almost doesn't matter who you are against Detroit at 6,500. Uh, Savale hasn't pitched in too long. So probably going to have to cross him out. It's been what, since, july 13th that he's pitched yep. but i i do think that you're always in play against detroit and it depends on what we hear about pitch count and i'll try and do a little digging on that later but um that's 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 my biggest level and and then and then the cleveland is the, is the other another one of the the pivot stacks you can you can certainly use um and i don't think they're gonna get much ownership so 
all of these teams are sort of rate, rate, rating fairly similarly to me, which means I'm probably going to go with Toronto Atlanta higher because they have more upside in how they can get the how they can score their runs. But you certainly can't cross Cleveland off the list early in the day. I think they're very reasonable. I think mean, Cleveland is uh, is definitely reasonable. I think they're they're one of the they're one of the groups underneath uh, the Atlanta Toronto Colorado, um, and I think that uh, as far as those pivots, so. Uh, I definitely like Cleveland, uh, Ramirez, Quan. I like playing Quan. Gonzalez hit a home run for me yesterday, I think. Um, Straw, Naylor, uh, Jimenez. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to say these things, say these names, like with enough force to make you believe they're actually really good players, but but they're, they're, they're good enough. To, to put, put, Ramirez is really good. <laughs> the rest of them, yeah. I'm, trying, I'm trying to talk myself into that they're good, but they're really just good plays. You know, there's a difference. Right, right. Um, so I like Cleveland, and I'm definitely not playing Savali. If anything, I'd play Detroit. And Savali, I don't, I don't like him at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just am worried about the, the – I, I need to take a look at the pitch count thing and and figure that part out because I, I would consider Savali here if if there was 85, 80 80-plus pitches, uh, but probably not – probably don't need to do it on this slate. All right, massive chalk here, yeah. uh, Verlander. Um pretty clearly with uh, weather concerns in the other game, you know, just the, he's just been, I mean, to say consistent would be an understatement. The guy has been absolutely great all year long. Even when he struggles, he gets there uh, pretty clearly the number one guy. Uh, you have Phil Cuzzy, who used to be an extreme pitchers umpire, although he's not, he's currently not grading out that way this year, but uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I like, I like, I like Verlander and I, and I don't mind him with the Houston stack, but I, I know I don't want to name every stack, but I think all of these stacks are viable pivots off of what is going to be the chalk. And I think Houston will be the other one that um, they'll get a little bit of ownership. So, so uh, yeah, I think Houston and, uh, and, and Verlander certainly make a lot of sense, but uh, I'm going to, I'll do my stack rankings at the end because I'm naming too many stacks here, but I, I think that Verlander is pretty clearly the top pitcher on the slate. Yep. And uh, you know, Needless to say, um, if if you whatever reason don't want to play Verlander, or if you you know, have have not some non Verlander stat, uh, combinations, I have no problem you putting a Corey Seager one off in there um, uh, for Texas. But uh, I I do like uh, Verlander and I do like Houston. Yeah, and I, and I want to throw out just quickly because I I'm going to highlight a few of my favorite actual individual plays. So Trey Mancini, if he was playing in Houston, and just if you switched his home games from Baltimore with Houston, I think that people have talked about this. He would have eleven more home runs than he has this season. Oh, that's actually a thing. Yeah, which which, wow. which, which, which I mean, again, it's hard to measure all that stuff out because they moved the, the walls back in 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 uh, and he's also been crushing the ball since he got to Houston. Although some of that's been on the road, so it's kind of people are like, oh, of course he's hitting the ball now, but he had two home runs the other day, and that was in Cleveland. Like, um, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean anything, but. 3.4 K is a reason is a incredible price for Mancini and uh, Mancini will, depending on where he's hitting in the order, will probably be a priority one off for me along with Acuna as my favorite ones. All right, let's talk about KC and Chicago. Um, boy, uh, you know, we talk about a lot about Martin Perez and you know, who else has been good in real life this year and just get, get hit, gives up tons of hits, but doesn't really get, trounced ever is is and just sort of always sort of gets does does well enough is Cueto I'm not talking about playing Cueto I'm just throwing it out there that he's been much better than he's been given credit for um I think this is a perfect spot to stack the White Sox I love the White Sox against lefties uh I know they haven't been as good this season but their lineup grades out really really well against lefties uh the only problem is the guys who the guy who i really want tim anderson is not going to be in the lineup today i don't believe so oh, screw that that's that, that sort of takes them a little bit out of a little bit out of some of that mix because he's a, he's one of those guys who against lefties we really like to play but still pollock Ro, robert uh vaughn and abreu all really really strong plays and uh yeah i think the white Sox are in that same category of second tier stacks to the to the chalk unfortunately i mean when you have we don't want to come off as saying I recommend a zillion things. You do have to kind of take some kind of stance. But when you have a slate, I'm like going this, to at the end. Yeah, when you have a slate like this, where where you have the Cardinals as such a standout, and you you want to get different, you know, you have to experiment with a lot of different options. You know, that's just that's just the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. For, for example, uh, I I uh, I I'm coming up with some Kansas City as a decent value. Uh, listen, whenever Michael Taylor's on. The- <laughs> In the lineup, I'm, I'm going to be playing it somehow. <laughs> um, 
So uh, I, I like that a little bit. Uh, and you can actually put some good players along with them. You could play, you know, more expensive Bobby Witt and Salvador Perez along with them. But uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's another very reasonable just stack to put in your player pool. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to get to either of the pitching. But but um, but like you said, I always I still like playing the righties from Chicago against uh, against le- against lefties. Mm-hmm. Um, those Tim Anderson sucks, but what do you get? Robert, do you still get uh, a Abreu? Uh, Pollock always been good against lefties. Uh, Eloy Jimenez, Robert, yeah. Vaughn, Abreu. A lot of power ups yeah. here. And uh, and guys like Abreu, I don't think are going to get any ownership because of how strong first base is today. So okay, so we got we got we have sneaky lefty. If that means anything in the Colorado game, we have Freeland. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be on board with with probably fading St. Louis tonight. I, I have okay. I have respect for Freeland. He's been awesome. Yeah um lately actually uh of course they this is a terrible matchup against the righty dominant lineup i'm not saying i'm going to fade all of their hitters but i am probably not going to be full stacking at all any st louis tonight and i probably won't even get to more than three men because i have some respect for freeland again tough matchup for him against a team that's going to throw a million righties at you and that's what they do um but i and the prices are too cheap and all that yada 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 but uh, I am on board with with maybe uh, fading fading the St. Louis side and playing more of the Rocky side. Uh, it's hard, I, you know. We don't want to chase the the, the 15, sixteen run game, but if no one else is going to play the Rockies, I will take some shots against the Rockies against a lefty at home in Quintana, who is just probably at this point of his career, I would call him an average, maybe slightly above average lefty. But in Colorado, for a guy who's throwing off speed pitches, uh, it feels like Colorado would be the way to go for me. I have three guys that are slated to be in the St. Louis lineup that are 2K, 2K, and 21. It's ridiculous. I got Albert Pujols at 2K. I got Lars Nukbar at 2K. I got y- Yadier Molina w- w- coming off a day's rest, right, at 2,100. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, not that any of those guys are whatever, are locks, obviously, but the 2K at Coors, I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. And then I have Car- Carlson. You know, these guys are all – yeah, you know, they're all good plays. Uh, Goldschmidt, sixty-two hundred. Uh, that, that's expensive. Um, that's probably what he should be at this <laughs> in Colorado. Yeah. He probably should be more like sixty-seven hundred, but that's okay. Um, yeah. That would be kind of cool if they actually did real dynamic pricing for for situations like this. But anyway, yeah. but like you said, I mean, it's not like he's, he's against. Uh, you're going against what's his name uh, against like Arena or whatever it is. I mean, this is uh, this is probably Colorado's one of their best pitchers, and he's been you know he's. Talk about having tricks. I mean, he's had tricks in this freaking stadium forever. So uh, uh, I'm with you. Um, I'm, I'm kind of. Uh, I'm probably going to try to try to get off of this a little bit. No, listen, we've already discussed like some options. I mean, it's not like. Uh, oh yeah, there's plenty uh, of other options. There's not like there's no other not no like there's no other team that can score seven eight runs. You know, so what you need is for you to just you know just keep it keep it reasonable. I'll, I'll sign on if I'm fading. I'll sign on for Colorado, St. Louis getting five runs. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, mm-hmm. And then I'll I'll figure out which one I'm gonna get to smash. Um, the one problem with fading this game is gonna throw out the weather because it is 90 degrees in Colorado oh, and the wind's gosh. blowing out at 11 miles an hour to left center. That's a little scary when you have two lefties on the mound, and that's why partly I think why the run total is so high. I mean, you get a really warm game with 11 mile an hour winds blowing out against to left to right to left center against two lefties. Oh, it's gonna be a tough to just completely cross this one off. But I'm maybe I'll do what Rody did and get my CJ Cron whatever two home run type of game or something like that because I, I i don't know maybe i just don't really want to stack this much chalk uh and i do i think colorado is going to be significantly lower owned and i don't think there's a huge difference between freeland and quintana as pitchers in, at this point of their career personally all right so i'll just say this so i i'm looking at my uh my uh my uh, initial ownership projections and there are two projections that i'm just kind of like bleary eyed with um, one one of them we dis- I discussed earlier. I didn't discuss earlier. I, I currently am projecting Verlander for like seventy four percent ownership. It's got, that's a little high. Okay, um, that'll 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 be lower. But I've got Madison Bumgarner at twenty two percent ownership. Um, if that is in fact the case, I mean I've I've found my other stack. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if, right. if that's actually the case, you can just give me all those Pittsburgh guys I like to play. You know, you give me all that Brian Reynolds and and and. Uh, What's his name? And Cabrian Hayes and and uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, even O'Neal Cruz, lefty lefty. I don't care. You know what I mean? I'll I'll play all, all that Pittsburgh stuff. Uh, if that's in fact, I I can't imagine a world where Madison Bumgarner is twenty percent owned in any slate against anybody nowadays. 
So I'm just gonna have to take a look at that. Um, is Mitch Keller in play? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, again, the the pitching, especially uh, the the SP two, is is rough. So, and Arizona's no, you know, they're not great. They, why, why is why is Bumgarner better at 6900 than Keller at 6600? I don't know. Um, so th that's what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at this. I have literally not a shred of interest in playing a 20% on Madison Bumgarner. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'd rather play pitch. Yeah, I, I, this game for me, um, mostly though, is going to be a cross off because I've named a bunch of other stacks that I like that are going to be low owned. But look, Chavis at 2K again after a big mm -hmm. night. Um, I certainly have no problem with that. Chavis is, you know, really good numbers against lefties on the season 13 extra base hits, basically, a, an extra base hit per, per uh, 10 at bats basically is where he's at for the season um, against lefties. Bumgarner can get hit hard. Um, I, I think this is a, I think it's reasonable to to play like a Chavis at least um, as a, as a, certainly as a one-off that stands out, but uh, you know, it's first base is, is strong today. So uh, he's, I don't think he's even with the, with the big day yesterday that he's going to be particularly high owned. So um, I'm, but, but again, this one's more of a cross off for me than, than it is anything else. Um, all right. So Pepe, so this is a weird one. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do here because <laughs> you, you, we're not playing Pepe at 10, three. <laughs> well, for, no, but uh, in terms of talent, <laughs> you'll see why in about a year that right. uh, why he's 10, three here, this kid is right. absolutely going to be, he's electric. The Dodgers have a beautiful future with this. Well, they always do, but I mean, significantly by far and away the best team in baseball i don't even think it's particularly close in my opinion i don't think it'd be hard for anybody who wants to come at me with that one and whether they win the world series doesn't necessarily matter to me i just think that i mean what they are just significantly to me better than everybody else in baseball at the moment um sunny gray is a guy who i have a lot more respect for than than dfs or projections ever do but you just put anybody against the dodgers and it's it's a tough matchup i i think the dodgers at low ownership um with which is weird. They're projecting to be really low owned and they've got the third highest run total on the slate. When that happens, like that doesn't make any sense to me, but they're expensive. So I guess you can't really play them as easily, but I don't know. I, I think the Dodgers are completely viable, but it really scares me a little bit to pick on Sonny Gray as I have some respect for him as a real life pitcher. So that's, I'm just struggling whether or not I want to include the Dodgers as one of those stacks that I really like as a pivot. Okay. I'll just make it nice. I'll just make it nice and easy for you. First of all, ask, ask your friend, uh, what the uh what the weather's gonna be uh, oh I, I can't i can't i can't do it here but um oh she's not it's, around it's no 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 um okay. it's at 78 degrees and the wind's blowing out uh the center field at eight okay. miles so so i just i'll make your life nice and easy like the, the dodgers are facing a right-handed pitcher and they're not going to be the highest owned team on the slate sounds good to me i i'm totally in uh i'm, I'm and it's late i can i can pretend i have a chance you know what i mean like even whatever yep. i'm totally into that um as a matter of fact i looking back at all this other stuff look houston's obviously going to be pretty obvious i guess so i guess houston the toronto game especially if that obviously if it plays atlanta maybe against pavetta i i am gonna at least a, i can say whatever i want because 110 and it's not till six hours from now do we have to do anything but if you tell me right now which one, I'll, I'll, I would just go just blindly play the Dodgers. That would that would be my that would be my 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 stack in the big one if it locked in twenty minutes. That 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 would that's what I would do. I would sit there and wait and say, okay, Sonny Gray, come and get me. I got all the lefties. Um, hopefully, well, obviously, it'd be nice to get a good lineup also. But you know, the the Bellinger still four K. Um, what's his name, Muncy? I'll pay for what's his name, Freeman's down to fifty four hundred. Let's go. I mean, he was six yeah, K recently. Year, right? Yeah, he was like yesterday. <laughs> Lux, if he gets in, yeah, I, I think I think this is going to be the idea for me. Yeah, I think everybody. It's one through nine is 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 in play. If you play the Dodgers, is just the way that it goes with them. Um, uh, Max Muncy, sneaky, has been much, 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 much better uh, since the All Star break, and uh, Bellinger has as well. Uh, they're starting to uh, they're rounding into form a little bit and they're winning every game by a million so i i certainly have no problem with the dodger stack and i think that is that that i agree with you it is a nice easy way to approach this slate and it makes a lot of sense i just want to reiterate that it does worry me a tiny bit that i think sunny gray is a 
sneaky low I, well not sneaky i think he's just a much better pitcher than he gets credit for and i don't really know why he doesn't get more credit because i know he's had i, I got I have, an, I have another thing to talk to you about here so if, if joey gallo gets in against the righty right i mean they, they've mentioned they've been pretty clear that they're only gonna well they're gonna try to only play him against righties yeah they have no reason to ever play him against lefties but yeah All right and i don't know if you followed any of this but but his time in new york was just miserable like mm-hmm. like he he was interviewed about this. He, he, and listen, I think that a lot of this is overblown, but, but for, in his case, it's not really playing in New York is, is rough, you know, when you're not doing well and you don't have the stomach for it. He couldn't take it. You know, he couldn't take the booze. He couldn't take the aggravation. Everybody was asking what the hell's wrong with him, whatever it is. He was, you read some interviews about him or you watch his, he like wouldn't even leave the house when he was, he couldn't wait to go on the road. Jeez. It was a miserable, miserable time. He was so happy when he got out of here and I feel bad. You know what I mean? And, and you put a lefty in a better, you know, you put a lefty in the Dodgers lineup. I always feel as though that they have like special tricks to have those lefties swing for the fences and Gallo already, already has that home run swing anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think this is, I think it's a much better spot for him to be in LA than in New York for a lot of reasons. And some people just can't, you know, can't perform under that type of stress. And I think that in LA, he's going to do a lot better. So um, when he, whenever he gets into the lineup, I, I think I'm going to take a shot with him. So if he gets in, even if it's like the eight hole or something like that, mm-hmm. um, I, I think, I think he's worth, he's worth doing here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I totally agree with you. I, I, but again, I, I could say that about every Dodger, if you're going to play them, there's, you're going to have a rough time finding a, a bad play. The guy who I would have the least interest in is always going to be Justin Turner because the power seems to have gone away. Um, And he is just a good, he's at best a a good real life hitter. And honestly, he's not been that even this year. So um, he would be the one guy I probably am least likely to play, which means he's going to hit a home run tonight. Um, All right. So to sum up the, the the, the other stacks that the stacks I'm seeing, I sort of really like this mini, mini Miami stack thing and using them for value. Um, I'm, I'm going to Toronto would probably be my, my highest preferred one. Um, I like Colorado. I like Houston and I like the Dodgers the best. I think those are my three current leaders. And I, as far as one offs go, Acuna, Mancini, Chavis, um, whether you're in stacks or not, did want to point out that I, I liked Atlanta better until I realized it's 68 degrees in Boston, which just takes away a little bit of, you know, look, there's a lot of stacks that I have rated very similarly. So when that's going to be the case, I'm going to to be a little less interested there. So that's what I've got for my priorities for pitching. Verlander is clearly number one. And then I'm deciding between Barrios. That probably is going to be Barrios, to be honest with you. And I also would have no problem double spending up with Verlander and Alcantara if we have the weather uh, is okay. How about you? Obviously watch the weather. Um, but for me, I think the Dodgers are my favorite, um, at least right now of the non St. Louis, obviously St. Louis is going to project to be the best play, right? I just yep. say that what it is, but it's almost stupid for me to even keep saying it. That, you know what I mean? If I'm not going to play them, why even mention it? But, um, well, you might play some of the two K guys to, to fill in for value or that's something. That's true. Absolutely. Um, and I guess like, for example, I just, this just for fun. If, if I, if you put in, I just want to see what happens. If you didn't want to do this and played Verlander with, um, with Alcantara, you could play I mean, St. You could play St. Louis easily. You could play St. Louis pretty easily, right? Yeah, because you play the three two K guys and then Arenado and Goldschmidt. <laughs> Molina, you get him at twenty one hundred, right? And then you yeah. get uh, who the other guy? We also De Young is really cheap too. De Young is still thirty four hundred. And then you've got Newt Bar if he's in the lineup and uh, Albert yeah. Pujols, but so, then you guys so, you can't play Pujols and uh, and uh, what's his name? Can't play Pujols with Goldschmidt, obviously on DK. More, so more, more, uh, all the more reason to face St. Louis. They're going to be a million percent owned. Um, uh, so for me, I guess you know, I don't say flip a coin, but I, Dodgers, Dodgers make a lot of sense to me. Um, mm-hmm. So that would be my my top one for now. But there's a lot of things you could do, uh, and I encourage everybody to show up at six for more. Yep, absolutely. More. All right. Well, with that said, good luck to everyone tonight. Hopefully somebody takes one down. We want to see some screenshots and uh, we're going to be recording a golf video. So stay tuned for that. Good luck, everybody. All right.